a great meeting point, convenient light meals, hot and cold beverages, or a quick snack on the go, what's your order for the day? We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Hello and welcome to Real Talk with me, Anele, right here on SABC3. The stage is yours today. Our special treat for you, because joining me is a sensational gospel artist who stole people's hearts with her voice from a very young age when she was a member of Joyous Celebration. Her songs, coupled with her voice, make up the formula that has seen her receiving a Sama in 2013, as well as two Africa Gospel Music and Media Awards uh, in the, this year in the UK, amongst the many other accolades she has received throughout her career. Four albums in, she has seamlessly earned the right to be counted amongst the gospel greats here in South Africa. And she's here to tell us her story. She is Ndoko Zombambo. But before we start like speaking to her, here's a little bit of something from her album, Spirit and Life. It's the dawning of a new day. New levels of influence. New beginnings with new meaning And it begins with great desire To serve the Lord with one heart So we release a worship that shifts the atmosphere So, do you ever appear in your own music videos? <laughs> Good question. No, I do, I do. Really? Because I'm yeah. just like, when is she? Like, I like your face. You have a pretty face. I like, I like the flowers. And it makes sense that, you know, they're blooming and it's yeah. a new day. But I want to see your face. It, it'll be on the next one. It'll the, be next on the, one. the next one. You can yeah. be there. Yeah. So, you're going to, yeah. what, you're going to shoot another video for the same song? <laughs> no. And then it can just you waking up in the morning. <laughs> Come on. Waking up out of bed. No. <laughs> <laughs> Opening the curtain in your white robe, right? <laughs> like your like your morning prayers, and then like you, you, you kind of do this. So listen, this award that you get in the UK, uh, Gospel and Media Award, is yes. that, that's a big deal, right? Yeah, it is. So did it you is. go over there to like to, you know to accept it, or were you busy? I didn't. I couldn't. I really couldn't go. Mm. Um, but but there were some South Africans who were there um, at that time yeah so they were the ones who walked up and accepted the award on my behalf i think it's a it's okay it's a big deal to win it but it's a bigger deal if you can't make it you're so busy. You're like, <laughs> you're like, look yeah. up. well <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> do you know what i'm saying and then you like record the video hi guys hi this award means everything i'm currently on tour so i can't be there to accept the award huh? yeah it was one of those but you were there to accept your Sama, though. Yes, I was. I All was, right. How was, was that moment? It was amazing. It's great. I think it's it's really great um, getting the pat on the back because yeah. it really is a boost. Um, it reminds you that you're doing the right thing. Yeah. It's, it's almost like Anna, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. You're doing the we right see thing. You. Yeah, we see you. We we acknowledge you yeah, kind of thing. Acknowledge you. So it it really is amazing. You're not just singing and nobody's listening. Exactly. I, I, exactly. I like that. Yeah. Your voice also has a very like, obviously, you've got a pretty voice. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here <laughs> winning awards in the UK that you can't attend. <laughs> but uh, there's a very, like, strong jazz element to it. So have you ever, like, thought to yourself, you know, one day I'll venture off from the gospel and just, like, do jazz or something else for yourself? No, not, not really. really. No, never. I've never thought about it. But I have been asked the question, though, um, why particularly gospel, considering the nature of my voice. My voice is more secular and so forth. Yeah. But, yeah, I've, I have had that kind of question, but nah, it's just, it's not me. 
so you are, you know, the, when, did you ever sing in church? Is that, is that where yeah. your roots are? Definitely church. I grew up in a very strict Christian home. Uh. Uh, my mom used to lead praise and worship in our church. My dad used to be the sound guy at the back. Oh, and, um, you were there from Monday to Sunday. <laughs> exactly, <then. laughs> kind of vibe. Literally there at church every single day, kind of vibe. So I grew up in that environment. It's so. your DNA. Exactly. And do you write your own music? I do. I do write some of my stuff. And then some of the stuff I, I work, I collaborate with my husband yeah. or I call a couple of my friends who I know are brilliant songwriters yeah. and I ask for their contributions as well. And then do you like sing hymns that are already existing? Because I mean, if you grew up in church, you know, you know all the songs. <laughs> you like that girl at a funeral where, where the old woman starts the song, you like right behind her. You like, I know that like, one. Like, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do sometimes, but um, it's, it's very limited in the albums. I'm, I'm a person who believes in new songs, new Good. material, new stuff. Mm. Um, the Bible does state, sing a new song unto the Lord in the book of Psalms. So I'm, I'm a firm believer in singing new songs. And you can have like one, one nyana yeah, in the one, album. One you know, standard. Just to remind okay. Aboko Oko and stuff. But don't have the complete album, just wire wire. Because I think it could, it could promote a bit of complacency, don't you think? Yeah, it would. It yeah. would. It would have, it would promote mediocrity as well in the entire industry. There we go. Yeah. So five years old, you were a, a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Why do you laugh at that? Do you know what I love about it? You're laughing like you're laughing at yourself. <laughs> exactly. No, but it is crazy. So if you stop ballet, you are so advanced. You know that. If you stop ballet at five, when did you start? Like you were two and you were out there doing a pirouette. <laughs> I was. They started early. Yeah. Um, I think my, my parents had that thing that they wanted me to be in the entertainment industry okay. some way somehow whether it's through dance whether it's through music uh. and then as i continued on then they realized that no man uh -uh, it's more news music than dance so how do they tell when, when they tell you the story you, how did how could they tell that you were a singer because I was practically singing all the time. Mm. There would be music playing in my father's car and I would just jump on it. Okay. I was that kid who remembered a song instantly. You play it once for me, second time around, I'm, I'm singing along okay. kind of vibe. So then, then they realized that, nah, there's something different about this one. And then you went, they, they, they took you out of ballet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, ballet is a little bit of expensive. So I'm just gonna come out and say it. Yeah, no, no. I'd no, also take my child out of ballet and convince them they like running. Don't you like running? <laughs> like, it costs nothing to run. You need some water and grass. So, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, so they take you out of ballet and they put you in piano lessons. Yes. Uh, do you still play the piano? No, I don't. Mm, quit that too, I see. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got lazy. When did you stop piano? Um, when, when, I, because how it happened was, oh. um, they started me on the piano lessons at five and I would have to walk quite a distance to get to the, the old lessons. lady's house, oh. um, where we were doing the lessons. It was quite a distance. So I, I just got lazy. Hence, I'm, I've always been chubby and <laughs> you, <laughs> I just got lazy. Like, ah, oh, why do I have to walk all the way there? I don't have to run It was I'm a being serious changed. walk. It was a serious walk. So at least I stuck it out for a couple of years and... And I think when I became a teenager, I was like, Psh. whatever. Yeah. But th it doesn't leave you that being able to identify notes, obviously. So it's still part and parcel of yeah. your, your DNA when yes. it comes to music. It, it is. I still know the basics and I still remember the basics. Mm. And I still remind myself of the basics because at the end of the day, I'm still a musician and I take my craft really seriously. Yeah. yeah. So you're not like those piano players who like, I can play piano, and then they play. Do, no, do, 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 no, do, I don't do, even do, try. <laughs> I don't even try. Especially when you've got a husband like mine who is really skilled in playing oh. keys, you're like, Shh. And you're like, no, step son. Step aside. Let me just step aside. You know what? I'll just sit on the piano and I'll belt out a tune. <laughs> How's that exactly. for fun? Exactly. Listen, don't go away. After the break, Dr. Oza will share a whole lot more with us about her career, especially how she got into joyous celebration. Welcome back. If you have just joined us on the couch today, we have award-winning gospel singer Ndoko Zambambo, who started her professional music career at the age of 15 as the youngest member of Joyous Celebration. 15? Yep. 
<laughs> do you go to the auditions? Does somebody hear you in a bathroom singing? <laughs> you know, what's that process? Um, I, I didn't go to auditions, um, but I remember way, way back, a couple of years earlier, my parents, I was in a group with my parents, uh. and we kind of auditioned for Joy Celebration 1. Uh. So that was a long, long time ago, and ultimately... Before you were 15? Yeah, before I was 15. And then ultimately, the group just somewhat decided, no, we don't want to be part of Joy. Uh. We don't want to do that. We want to do our own thing. So then that was flushed down the toilet, that dream was but flushed down the toilet. But then somebody saw you and you were always in their mind. Yes, um, particularly Pastor Mtunzi Namba. Mm. He was a very, he's always been a very close friend with my father's. So I literally grew up around him. So he was noticing that there was some, there's something different about her. And then a few years later, unfortunately, his mother passed away mm. and he asked me to sing at her funeral. And yeah, and that's where it all began what did ultimately. You sing? I sang, great is thy faithfulness. Child. <laughs> okay, so quickly, sidebar, and then we'll come back to mm -hmm. this joyous celebration. When you are in a group with your mother and your father. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is it just the three of you? No, it's not the three of us. There's a whole lot of other members as well. Okay. I think there was about 10, 15. Who are friends, people yeah, from the church. church, yeah. Okay, because I'm thinking it was just you and them. No, I, I wouldn't Imagine, survive. how do you quit no. and you still live in the same house? Nah, <laughs> nah. It's like people who are homeschooled. How do, you, how do you drop out of homeschool? I'm going to my room, okay? I leave the lounge yeah. and I'm going to my room. It wouldn't have worked. Okay, okay. So then at 15, um, so the pastor, does then he, you know, carry on these, these, these conversations about you joining Joyous Celebration? Yeah, he, he speaks to my parents directly. And then, yeah. at, um, and then I think a year later, he asked me to record the song with him for his album, um, Fundi Sinamba, and that's what we did. So we recorded that album with him. I just recorded that one song. Yeah. And then following year, my parents got the call that um, they want me to be part of Joyous Celebration. Yeah, and that's how it began. So... 15 is standard seven. Yeah. The grade nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My parents sat me down mm -hmm. and I got a huge lecture uh. about this. They told me that, listen, Chicky, you've always been an A student. Now that this music thing is happening, now that this joyous thing is happening, yeah. you're not allowed to slack. Yeah. If some way, somehow, we see that we see that your schoolwork is suffering, we're gonna kick you out. We're gonna take you out of the group. Yeah. So I was like, yo. Did you? I literally had to work extra hard. I'd get the kids in my class to teach me after school when I was at school. Yeah. Um, and I got extra lessons during weekends when I was around. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. And I worked really, really. I worked my butt off. <laughs> In high so school. how did it work? <coughs> Were you, let's say, dress celebrations on tour and you have to go with them. So you, you, are you missing out on class or is it falling during the school holidays or on weekends? How it happened was um, there's only one huge set of rehearsals and that happens in the beginning of the year. Okay. Leading up to Easter the big holidays. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. how it would happen was, I think the rehearsals would start in about February. So I'd only join when uh, schools are closed. So they would send me the material that was learned uh, when I was away, mm. and then I would learn it whenever I get a, got a chance. And then when school's closed, come mm. to Joburg for rehearsals, then go back. The beautiful thing, though, about uh, the Joy Celebration shows was that they were on weekends. Yeah, no, we're not out there on a Wednesday night. Exactly, Worship exactly, no, no, no. exactly. Yeah. So, so I would only travel during weekends, and then Monday I'd have to first flight back home to... What a glamorous Joburg. life for a 15 year old. Like, you like Macaulay Culkin, like a kid star. <laughs> oh no, I'm just gonna fly. You know, I've got this gig. I'll just, you know, I'll just like, fill out Sometimes the door. Sometimes I'd have to stay in a bus. It doesn't matter. Because you were still I have the... like exams. There was this one time I remember I had an exam on the Monday and there was a show Sunday night. So I literally finished the show Sunday and- No flights uh, at night. No flights. Yeah. And I have to be back in school first thing in the morning. So I quickly drove back, uh, took On a, a bus, bus, took a bus. And while in the bus, I didn't sleep the whole night studying, go quickly going through my, my schoolwork. Because in the morning, I have to go write an exam. 
it, it was a little glamorous. I mean, did, did, did the kids in your school know though? Like, ayo. Yo, no. they did. Ayo, that. <laughs> they ayo. did. They did. When they did. did you? Were you treated like a little bit of a celebrity at school? Was it welcoming? Was. Were you teased? I wasn't teased. They, uh, they, I, I, I got the celebrity status treatment and in my in my high school, and it was an all girls school, uh, so it was it was pretty cool. Except the teachers were very harsh, though. They obviously, were, they were like, uh, uh, girl. Did you have to cure at the tuck shop? <laughs> I did. Oh, okay. I did. <laughs> what, what are the foolish benefits of being I a celebrity did. in high school? <laughs> you have to cure at the tuck shop. I still had to cure like everybody else. <laughs> you know, um, who was it? I was reading one of these famous kids. I think it's Hermione from Harry Potter. Yeah. She was saying that she was, she was victimized at school because she was Hermione. They just used to tease her. Oh, shit. Right? That's I'm not like, nice. I'm like, just kids are strange, eh? Kids are mean. Oh, if I was a famous kid in my school, we'd be coming friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, your parents, were they like pageant parents? Were they like pushing you, pushing you, pushing you? Because, I mean, you've got siblings as well. Yeah. So how do they split the attention between the famous kid in the house and the other two? <laughs> uh, I don't know how they did it, yeah. but but they they somehow managed to do it because even today my siblings are so overprotective of me. If you Aww. say one thing that is out of line about me, my sister and my brother will like go guns blazing. Who's, who's older? Than my young. sister's older and my brother. my brother's younger. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't know how my parents managed it, but they really really preserved that that sibling uh, sisterhood brotherhood nice. thing because nice. the three of us are really really tight even to this day. And um, I have no idea how they managed to do that to keep us united, even yeah. though I was the celebrity one. Yeah. But they somehow always kept us together and made sure that, you know what, we looked out for each other. I don't know how they did that. And what does your sister do? Uh, my sister works uh, in, in the municipality. Okay, and your brother? My brother's a businessman. Yeah. Okay. So completely different. Yeah, from like because I'm like trying to see like is, is, is there, are there any, besides being related, are there any similarities? So as a 15 year old inside your celebration, surely, you know, because there's 39 year olds, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then there's 20 year olds, and then there's 50 year olds. What are what are the different set of rules that you're governed by? Because, you know, if everyone else is going out afterwards, you can't. Yeah. yeah. What my parents did was when I joined Joy Celebration, yeah. they handed me over to a certain lady okay. um, whom they That's know. That's a black parent thing to do. Extremely, yeah. extremely <laughs> black, extremely <laughs> black. So they handed me over to uh, Usus Margaret Mutzache. Yeah. I don't know if you know her. She, she currently works as um, one of the vocal coaches on Idols. So they handed me, literally handed me over to her and said, this is your mom. If she says no, it's a no. And uh, that and that that was it. I literally lived with her for the times when I was during rehearsals, yeah. or and she was part of the choir at that time, uh -huh. which made life easy. So I literally had my own police woman, yeah, like gay <laughs> <laughs> every now and then. So yeah. And what what was your synergy like with Bubbly and the Lanim kids? Oh, he he was such a dad. Yeah. All three of them yeah. were such yeah. were such fathers, and particularly Upasum Tunzi Number. At some mm. point, I thought the guy didn't like me. Because growing up, he was like my father's friend and he yeah. was so fun. And, he yeah. was, and then suddenly, I'm, yeah, he is a meanie. <laughs> he was so mean to me. And I'd be like, but how come? You know, and it's... it's you're like, like my dad, dad. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to be the nice one. You're supposed to make me feel welcome and feel at yeah. home. But I think he was instilling in me the discipline yeah. and the respect for the craft yeah. ultimately yeah so what what's the um, now that you say oh he was a meanie what's the, the the feedback like when it comes to that do you you know are you are you constantly molded critted uh, pushed probed is yeah. it oh literally after every performance he would get a recording of how i did i don't i'm not sure i don't think he did that with everybody else he would we would sit in his car and he would play the recording and we would go through the entire song. So after every phrase, he'd say, what, what did you hear there that you did wrong? And I'd be like, blank, I don't know. And he plays it again. Mm. So can you imagine someone sitting with you in a car, playing your song and saying, and literally going through details, you did this wrong, don't ever do this. Why, why are you saying ooh? Well, what, what, what's the point of your ooh? It sounds like you had nothing else to say. It, it should never be like that. You're like literally going through every single part of the song with me, every single performance. And that's why you're here. <laughs> this is Real Talk with Anela. Don't go away. So much more after the break.
So our guest today has opened the stage for countless acclaimed gospel musicians, amongst them Yolanda Adams, Donnie Mc, McClurkin, sounds, sounds like a burger, uh, a chicken burger at that, Kirk Franklin and Cece Winans on their South African tours, and she has traveled far and wide giving stellar performances. So when you open for these people, are you like, oh my word, Cece Winans? Because Cece Winans is a powerhouse though. Like, Cece Winans Listen. is the goat, like seriously. Yeah. Insane. Do you crazy. sleep the night before when they say, no. Okay, okay. No. At least you're honest I, about I, that. Because also Cook Franklin is, you know, quite a powerhouse as well he when it comes is. to gospel. And yeah. Then you're opening for him. Yeah, it's quite exciting, quite exciting. But it, it, it's, it's scary also at the same time. Um, I'm always nervous before I go on stage. Uh. Uh, I, I don't know whether to go to the toilet, whether to run away or to disappear or dig a hole and just bury myself in it. So it's just... I think that's most people's process when they're about to hit the stage. But, I mean, everyone will say, in the first three seconds, then I'm fine. Yeah. Is, is that the same for you? Same. Exactly the same. When is it? Is it when you hit the first note? Is it when you're done with the first song? I think immediately as I take a step forward. Uh. Yeah. And what was the process like from going from singing in a group to going solo? It's hard. <laughs> it's Look, hard. That's so honest, eh? It's hard from, from being uh, surrounded with all of the support and literally people who've constantly got your back. No matter what happens on the joy celebration stage, there's always someone who's there to pick you up or to... You know, no matter and the what energy. happens, exactly. And we feed off each other the love and the family uh, mm, mm, mm. thing that's going on on stage. So, and then suddenly you're all on your own and you have to. And I'd imagine even the, um, the touring aspect of it, like, yeah. you know, you're no longer like 60 of you in a bus where you're laughing and you're singing. Now yeah. it's just like. <laughs> it's exactly like that. <laughs> and uh, and performance-wise, performance when you're on stage now without, obviously, you've got backup singers, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, so you're not necessarily the only instrument on stage no, yeah. doing things. I've always wondered with gospel artists, because other genres of... I'm not going to... I'm not going to frame you. <laughs> other genres of music, they've got a... You know, they, they've got their own concerts, right? And they've got yeah. their own tours and they've got their own appearances that they put together. But also, they've got the blessing of corporate gigs, mm -hmm. you know, where banks will book you, uh, car, you know, brands will book you, end of year functions for, yeah. you know, mines will book you. Do gospel artists get booked at corporate events? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I have been booked okay. for a corporate event. Okay. But if I get an inquiry from... Uh, a corporate company. Yeah. I make it clear though that I'm, I'm not a uh, gospel is what I do, gospel yes. strictly. Yes. And um, I, d please don't expect anything that is outside yeah. of what you've seen me do. It's it's not me. I'd rather not accept it. That's that's what I believe. So, but I have been booked mm. for corporate. Because I I and see a lot of them, and you know you get that Mikasa. Okay, sure. AKA okay, sure. You know, like it's. I've just never seen like Rebecca at a corporate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she does. Hey, oh, even yes. even the late Sfisongwane yes. were, was also huge with corporate events as yeah. well. Yeah, and it, uh, were uh, were those your influences? Are those people that you look up to? And even if you're like on the same level as them, look side to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In the industry. No, I, I wouldn't say I look side to Mam Rebecca. Mam Rebecca's like all up there on her no, own. No, no, I was talking about <laughs> when I stayed side to Mam Rebecca's like, I would she's, be scared. She's an inspiration though, yeah. Mam Rebecca. Because for me, she was the first woman that I saw on TV who was doing gospel music. And when I saw her, I was like, yeah, yes. that's it. That's what I want to be. And she was the first South African because I had yeah. been exposed to a lot of international um, music mm. Um, mm. and, you know, the whole old school, mm. your winings and so forth. Mm. So mm. I'd been exposed to that. So getting an opportunity to sit and see a South African woman. And do it for that long. Doing it. I was like, no. For that long. Surely I can also do the same thing. It, staying on, on, on the gospel probe here. Isn't there pressure because, you know, there's two genres in the country, well, three, that are deemed to sell, you know, massive numbers. Mbakanga, yeah. Afrikaans, uh -huh. 
and gospel. Yeah. So is there not pressure when you, if you're not selling like a hundred thousand, two hundred, three hundred thousand, you're gonna be like how? <laughs> and then when uh, where are the numbers? <laughs> bring, bring us the numbers. Isn't there like a pressure with that? For me, no. It, there mm. never has been pressure for me. Um, I started at the age of 15, and my sound has always been con contemporary styled. Yeah, yeah. It has always been that way. I started in the industry when it was completely dominated by traditional gospel yeah, music. Yeah. So from the onset, I was told that, dude, you are waste kitty, you're wasting your time. Rather go try secular, try jazz. Uh. You're, you're, you're more likely to make more money in that in those environments uh, because gospel is purely dominated by traditional and you, you sound exactly yeah. so yeah it's not gonna work oh. you know so from it, from then onwards i've always i was always like okay fine at some point somebody's gonna pay attention yeah. at some point yeah. someone's gonna want to listen as long as i just stick to what i believe god has called me to do this is me this is what god this is how mm. god made me and this is what my gift has been purposed for so i'm not going to change and try to fit in with mm. what's happening around me i'm just going to do me if sales happen praise the lord if they don't it's all good mm -hmm. yeah and do you put on your own shows as well i do i do okay I do. Apparently that's where the money is. <laughs> it is. It is. That, that's, that's where it is. So when did you go solo? I went, I think when I was part of Joy Celebration, I always did was solo. So, yeah, you get a solo it, in there. Yeah, yeah but <clears throat> I, even outside of Joy, I'd still get opportunities ah. outside the group. But when I left the group completely, which was about six or seven years ago, then I really had to stand on my own and do my own stuff. And that was hard. How long do you, do you take to make that decision? I was there for 11 years. <laughs> okay. Exactly. And, okay, and <laughs> at which year were you getting the itch of like, I need to do something on my own, otherwise I'm never going to do it? I think from, from the ninth year. From okay, the ninth that's, year. That's when the itch got in there. Yeah, that was when I was like, nah. No, no. I think for me, it was um, when I fell pregnant. Okay. When, I, when I was pregnant with my first child, I was like, okay, what is my purpose? What what, what am I doing to achieve my purpose? Mm, kids will make you focus. Dude, man. dude, they will just make you <laughs> align like, everything. Hey, hey, young lady. <laughs> exactly. What, what is it that we're doing here, boo-boo? <laughs> exactly. For me, that was the moment where I was like, okay, no, I need to, uh, I need to focus and realign myself. I've just been chilling it's not i can't do that anymore what 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 did being in a group for this long teach you and benefits you now as a solo act that does it on their own for me being in a group for that long i learned consistency mm -hmm. i learned professionalism mm. i learned um i learned i learned how to find myself and be content within myself because I suppose if there's so many people who are so exactly. many different things. Everybody's talented yeah. differently. There's to so try many not be them exactly. is you learning about yourself. Exactly, exactly. Because mm, it's always easy to look at the next guy. I'm like, oh, and but, like, oh, but I, like, so I like how she she's does so that. I want to do that. Mm. It doesn't work like that. Find yourself. Find who you are and be content within yourself. And I suppose it teaches you patience as well. It does. Because there's a lot of you, you know, yeah, things don't happen does. when you want them to happen. <laughs> it does. And at some moments, you have to... Uh, another thing that I learned was be happy for someone else. When it's their moment to shine, cheer them on because your moment is also coming, you know. And when you get your moment, you'd also want to have cheerleaders, wouldn't you? Uh, so cheer the next person on. If they're having an aha moment on stage, on stage. be that support, cheer them on. You guys do do that though, got your ass. Like, <laughs> when somebody's hitting a note, the, the, the rest of you, but you're like, you, it's like, yeah, man, balanda, you take it. I'm like, yeah. And I've always liked that. It just yeah. looked like it was one big family. Yeah, it is. Mm. All right, listen, listen. What have we learned from that one? I have, I have to reiterate what you just said. Cheer for somebody else. Be happy for somebody else. When it's their moment, it's their moment. Yours is coming. We'll be right back.
wish I could sing. Huh? Don't you think I'd be like amazing? That was the song Kululeka Moya from the album Spirit and Life by Ndokozo, who's not only a gospel singer, but also a songwriter and is involved in the creative and production processes of her albums with the help of a music producer who is also her husband, the man there who was on the piano in the little light tan jacket. <laughs> that is the headquarters. <laughs> that is the headquarters. Yeah. So, so you guys have known each other for a while. Yeah, for a while. Years. Years. And you guys, were, were you working together before you like decided to like, you know, collaborate <laughs> on more things than just music? <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank God good. Uh, look at God. Look at him. Just look. Just look at God. Eh? <laughs> we were working together. Um, we actually joined Joy Celebration the same year in oh. 2001. But even before that, we'd meet in church because he grew up, had this, exactly the same upbringing. Yeah. Strict yeah. Christian home. So we'd meet in church conferences and gospel concerts in Durban. Mm. And yeah, and we joined Joy Celebration in 2001, the both of us. Yeah. And we became great friends. We worked together. Yeah. And then he was like, ah, yo, ah, yeah. <laughs> Just come here. Come. So apparently, you, when he proposed, you guys were driving and he was a nervous wreck of, yeah, dude. I want to hear that story. It was my birthday. Oh, date? It was my birthday, and we went out on a date. So I can see Gutai Mara Okai. He's very, he's fidgety the entire time we're eating. We're at this restaurant, and you can see someone who's uneasy he's about something. He's glasses, salt and I pepper. I even ask him, are you okay? Right, right. I say, no, I'm fine, right. You know, I'm, I'm fine. It's just work. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So we carry on, we eat, and then suddenly he says, hey, let's go. He's like, oh, so happy. <laughs> you know, what about dessert? Like, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. He's like, no, uh, I want to take you somewhere special for desserts. I'm oh, like, nice. okay, cool. Okay. That's fine. So he, we pay the bill, and then we get in the car, and then we start driving. While we're driving, he so much just pulls over the car in, in some estate driveway. I'm like, hey, boss, what's going on? And then he opens the, that thing that black people don't know how to pronounce. The, the the cabin hole. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Because, uh, is it, but is it the cabin hole or the cabin I hole? I have no idea, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the thing on the dashboard, that, 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 that does things. That thing okay. that has things in there, yes. <laughs> so he opens that thing in Majigi and he pulls out a, a box. And in the, in the box, he opens it and it's a pair of earrings. I'm like, oh, wow, oh, thank you. Two weeks earlier, he'd given me a necklace. Yes. So I was like, oh, great. So it's matching necklace, earrings for the necklace. Yeah. I was like, oh, thanks. So he says, that's your birthday present. And he says, there's another one. I'm like, how? Another one, what else? And then he saw me pulls out the box with the ring, and then he proposed. Oh, my sweet. I was actually complimenting. <laughs> I, I absolutely love your ring. And you said that your dad said, oh, yeah, is that the engagement ring or the wedding ring? <laughs> yeah. You know, black folks, guys. He's old school. Old he wants school. the whole shebang Dude. that fills up the whole your, finger. Your entire finger looks like, like a you can't even, You can't even move the finger kind of. I was you like, know, I did. No, that's, no, that's, this is what it looks old like. School. <laughs> so what's the creative process like with you guys? Because if you've got two musical minds in one family, right? Mm -hmm. And... When I interview musicians and, I'm, and I've said, I always ask, how does the music come to you? They're like, well, I could be sleeping and I'll wake up and I'll, you know, record it on my phone. Yeah. It must be pretty difficult to sleep in your household then because there you guys <laughs> both sleep in. And it's like, -da 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 -da. and then like three hours later, it's his go. -da 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 -da. <laughs> it's, it's, it, yeah. It there are those days. Yeah. I remember there's this one song that I heard in a dream and I literally woke him up. I'm like, ah. I have a song. He's like, just record it on your phone. We'll talk about it tomorrow morning. You're like, no. I was like, seriously? What's Waband? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. He's like, hey, just record it on your phone. We'll see it tomorrow morning. So I record it on my phone. But basically, it depends on what we're working on. Oh. Uh, at times, it may be we're working on my album, or maybe it's a, someone else's album that he's producing. Yeah. And then he says, I Let's, let's do something, or I need your input on something. And then okay. we, have a, we have our little corner in our house. It's upstairs. Yeah. 
and we go there and yeah and we just start experimenting really yeah and when you record something on your phone you, you, do you have to be there to kind of explain it to him or does he just take it and and he kind of you allow him to see what he sees and then you come back and kind of say where you want to take it no i, I can't just give him an idea i have mm. to be part of the process so that he because when you get a, an idea whether it's in a dream or whatever yeah. musically you also have some elements that you are hearing at the same time. Uh, There's certain, uh, there may be a certain progression that you're hearing at a certain time or a certain drum pattern uh, or a certain bass line okay, that okay, you're hearing in your head. Okay. And then you have to try and explain all of that. It's challenge, you can lie. Exactly. And then I have to try and explain what I'm hearing in my head to him. Mm. And that tends to take some time. Okay, <laughs> this is why you married him. Exactly. So you don't have to pay him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and when do you then bring the writers in? Because earlier you spoke about sometimes you write, sometimes you collaborate. When yeah. do you bring the writers in? Um, it depends. It depends on, on what, for example, for Spirit and Life, I had a certain, certain vision for the album. Okay. And there are certain people that I had in, had in my head that I wanted as writing contributors uh, for, uh. Cer for certain songs. So I sent out the message to them and I told them what the theme is of the album and mm. they just sent what they had. And, and yeah, and I, I'd love what they send and hence the songs were on the album. And your children, do they, do they show signs of being Janet Jackson and Michael Jackson? <laughs> the, the signs are there. Okay. The signs are there because they're always humming something. Yeah. Um, they, even when we're upstairs working or writing a song with my husband, yeah. they have a tendency to want to come and listen in, or you'll find them even having an input as well mm. um, on some of the songs. For example, there's a song that I did in Spirit and Life. My daughter actually came up with an intro. So the song was, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done for me. So that was the chorus. Mm. So as we went along, then my daughter decides to ad lib. And she goes, thank you, thank you. Oh, stop it, you're making me cry. And we're like, hi, oh, look at this Okay. One. And then we, we, we decided to make that into the intro for the song. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what? When you were singing that, you looked like you wanted me to join, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> did you see that the fear in my eyes? I'm like, uh uh, girl. <laughs> uh, 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 leave me here. Leave me here. This hour has gone way too quickly. Stay with us for the last time. We'll be back after this. I'm like, And welcome back to the final segment of the show this afternoon with my guest, gospel sensation, Ndogo Zombambo. So, first yeah. kid, right, mm -hmm. is usually like, well, I'm not gonna say usually, I've only, have, I've only got one kid, <laughs> that's my only reference. Like, I don't know, I was never flustered. It just like felt like this is nice, you know, second nature, you know, your natural instinct kicks in. Yeah. But everybody who's got more than one kid, they say, mm -hmm. having, having two kids, is like being in the ocean carrying one kid and somebody just chucks <laughs> another one at you and they're like, swim, swim. You're like, Ooh. Are they correct? That's true, that is true. Yeah, you do, hey, hey, number. So, the, so the how, do you, one, how do you do it? And what's the age gap between them? Their age gap is two. Okay. Um, so they've got two years between, between them. them. And the second one, we didn't really plan Okay. It was um, a collab. Yeah, it was just a. Uh, yeah. uh, by the way, hey, hey. <laughs> stop that. Okay. Exactly, and um, so I, I wasn't prepared, uh. and uh, so it was literally. I uh, there were moments where I felt like drowning, but thank God for mothers, though. Yeah. And yeah. Um, my mom was just always there, so. So you know, wife, mother, uh, singer, entertainer, entrepreneur, because. The thing is, people don't realize that what you guys do, you entrepreneurs, you have to yeah. wake up and you have to create your, yes. uh, your own revenue stream every single day. That's true. So all of this, and I hate this question when women ask, how do you balance it? But, <laughs> but what I want to know is, forget the balance because you're doing it. So clearly you're balancing it, regardless <laughs> of how you do it. Yeah. 
Where do you take your me time? I decide to create me time. Uh -huh. It's a decision. I decide. The same way that I make a decision to spend time with my husband, yeah. I decide to have me time. It's, 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 it's something that I literally put in my schedule that I La. La, this is just me mm. and, and, and the lady doing my shoulders okay. and, and massaging or whatever. Or if I decide to go out with the girls and watch a movie, okay. it's a decision. You decide. You consciously make a decision to say, hey, hey. nothing here. Because I once tried to, to shut out myself from the whole scenario and it just didn't work i because you're the best that keeps everything else going exactly yeah. i was so focused on making sure that everybody else around me was happy yeah. the husband the kids uh, work yeah. you know everything yeah. just tip top yeah. that i completely forgot about myself to a point that i somehow even lost myself i was like what do i even like who am i how do i like my like eggs who? i like them scrambled exactly. i like them fried because you Dude. find that you you eat eggs the way your kids want them because exactly. that day they wanted them that way you're like okay fine we'll I'll just have it, it like that. I had to literally find mm. a moment to reintroduce myself to myself. Mm. Yeah. And in terms of church, because you're a gospel singer, mm -hmm. luckily, I mean, you, so you said it's who you are. It's a strong Christian faith. When you add church, right? Not everybody's a famous gospel singer. <laughs> you know, are they like, well, she's here. She must sing. <laughs> yeah, they're not like Really? That. No, not really. My, my husband and I are actually in charge of the music department in our church. Okay. So I, I think because we are so focused on raising worship leaders within our church, mm. we always make sure that we need to raise other leaders within okay. us. And the only way for, for us to be able to raise worship leaders within our team is mm. if we step aside and allow them to just mm. be and to grow. And it, like to the point that when they do see me on stage, it's like, oh, wow, oh, we even forgot that <laughs> you're part of us. You know, because for us, it's really important for us to not just be celebrities in our church yeah. because that's yeah. not what we are yeah. in the body yeah. of Christ. We are part of a body that is supposed to function. So I can't be a hindrance from other people operating in don't their block, gifts. Don't block the exactly, blessings. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I have to open the space, allow others to grow and to groom them into being better worship leaders. What could you be better at? Yo. Okay. It sounds like, it looks like the list is long. <laughs> Girl, how long you got? <laughs> <laughs> what could I be better at? I think I could be better at loving myself. Okay. I think I, 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 I can be. I'm 30, 31. 1980? Five. Five. 31. No, you're Th not 32. 31. 32 this year. 32, because I'm 32 in November. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm, Loving I'm yourself. No, you, it, it, it yeah, happens. It's a, it's a, yeah. Yeah, it's a, mm. it's a process. Yeah. 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 It happens. It's all good. But the thing is, you must just maintain it. You, you, you don't wake thing. up on Tuesday and then you love yourself. Then, but that's the then hard the, part, yeah. though. So <laughs> you, just, you have to maintain <laughs> it's it. It's a constant it's reminder. It's an everyday thing. Before <laughs> yeah. we go, yes, you're running out of time. I want to play a game with you. I'm going to give you a name of a celebrity, and you must okay. just sing the first song that comes to your head when you think about the celebrity. Okay. Okay. First okay. one up, Michelle Obama. It's all in me. Anything, Anything you want. Mm. Okay. Do you know that's funny because when I was looking at these, the song that came to my head was R E S P C T. <laughs> I know what it means to me. So -E -E we're close. We're close. Yeah. Okay. Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. Because I'm happy. Ooh, that's nice. Because I'm rich, rich, rich. <laughs> <laughs> I got the money. Okay. Uh, Julius Malema. Yo. <laughs> There's an old Kirk Franklin song that says, um, oh, 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 do you want a revolution? Who, who, do, do you, you want, want a revolution? revolution? Who, who, I know that. <laughs> Okay, and that's such an F song. <laughs> wow, you're good at this. Uh, Desmond Tutu. Hey, hey, I'm cool, Desmond. Um, you, for I me, I just being consistent. Oh, no, seriously, that's, that's yeah, the first like, thing that came yeah. to mind. Okay, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> I, what did I, I, as soon as I, 
I saw this one. I went to Sister Act. Are you serious? Yeah, literally, I went to Sister Act. <laughs> yes, follow him wherever you. Yes, I, I went exactly oh, that's there. Cool. That's a cool like, and, option. And even that other one, um, Heaven and Earth be so. Sorry, <laughs> 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 Is it? Brandy. Oh no, I'm such a Brandy fan. Dude, she's coming to the country. She's coming with Brian McKnight. I am <gasps> beside myself. I hope she sings the Full Moon album because yeah. that's like that's 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 like the, the it, ne? we all bow Full Moon must to be the, the one with. Uh, it has the song. The don't ever leave me. Come yes. A little bit closer. closer. Listen, girl, <laughs> come here. <laughs> this was this was good. This was good. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Blessings you. Blessings to you. Thank Go you. higher and higher. That's all we have time for today. Thank you so much to our guests and on Bamboo for gracing us with the presence. Don't you feel lighter? Don't you? From myself, the Real Talk crew, have yourself a good night. Ciao.